Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald at Love Packages Ministries in Butler, Illinois, Montgomery County. Butler is a small town, but in the world of Christian literature, this is a big place. For 38 years, this ministry has been sending Christian literature around the world. This year, more than 1,600 volunteers have put more than 1,000 tons of reading material into the hands of Christians around the world. Well, Steve Schmidt, maybe the way to start this story is at the end, because this is, this is where all the work that you've done in the culmination of, say, about a week or so, is now getting put on a shipping container, and it's going to get shipped to probably a third world country somewhere where people have absolutely no reading materials That's of any correct. kind. That's correct. And you specialize here in religious reading materials so that they can, uh, so they can learn more about about the spiritual life, about right. God, about what's promised for them. Yeah, the gospel. Those kinds of things. The yeah. gospel. There you go. Um, t tell us what's going on here. Well, we're filling a container. This is going to weigh 20 tons when we're finished. Um, we're filling it from front to back, bottom to the top. We chink every hole. Uh, these guys are really good at doing what they're doing. Uh, these are all volunteers. and. Uh, this load's going to go to Nairobi, Kenya. Is we, that right? Yeah, we're one of our distributors there. And uh, then when they get it, it'll take about 45 days to get there. And uh, when they get it, they'll keep it in a warehouse, and then they'll eventually distribute it out to mm -hmm. churches, missionaries, Bible colleges all over their country. Sometimes two or three countries. People mm -hmm. come in and pick things up and take it all over. Yeah, and, and of course, you were telling me earlier, this, these, might, these reading materials might go through 20, 20 hands before Yeah, the that. people that do the statistics tell us that every piece of literature we put on this is going to be read by a minimum of 20 people. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a million pieces of literature in here. In, in each shipping container? Yes. <laughs> wow. And so, uh, times 20 is uh, 20 million reads. Yeah. Yeah. Well, pretty soon you've touched everybody in the world. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, some of them repeats, you know, or whatever. You but couldn't do this without volunteers, could you? No, no, no. Uh, all these guys are like farmers or miners or uh, this is an ex-prison guard. And mm -hmm. We've got a call list of volunteers uh, locally, um, you know, 25-mile radius or whatever. And then they, uh, we just call them up, say, can you help us load on uh -huh. Thursday morning at 8 a.m.? Yes or no? And you know, we get about five guys yeah. and they come in and help us. So you start early. Uh, we're, as we stand here, it's about 9.30 in the morning. So it right. took you a couple hours to load this uh, right. container. This, this truck was scheduled to be here at 8, but it got here It got here early, 7.30. So mm -hmm. we've been working on it two hours. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're just about finished with it. They're going to put these, we save these kind of boxes for the door because we don't want it to fall out on Custom's head <laughs> <laughs> when they okay. open the door. Right. Right. And so uh, they'll make a wall there. And then we've got some other things we'll put back behind it so it doesn't fall out. How many of these containers might you load in a week? Well, this one makes the second one for this week. Wow. Um, so 40 tons this week, but um, we're on average, we, we do at least one, one every mm -hmm. week. As we go through this program, we're going to see not only this part of the process, this is the end of the process this is for the you. End. The beginning is identifying where the need is, collecting the materials, getting them all sorted out. Figuring out where you know how logistically how how do they get where they where they're needed and all that kind of thing. Uh -huh. And you've been doing this for 38, 38 years. years. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's been an evolution. You know, it didn't it didn't start. You know. Um, yeah. This big. Yeah. You know, I mean, this year it looks like we're going to hit 12 to 1300 tons of literature, and so that's enough literature for about um, 60 million people to read first time. Wow. Wow. Let's take a look at just, here's a good example of what the kind of thing to, now this is the Gospel Project. And yeah, this is put out by Lifeway, which is a Southern Baptist publishing house. Mm -hmm. And this is their leftover material. And when we get upstairs, uh, upstairs, we don't have stairs, but up the ramp and, yeah. and to the new building, we, we'll be able to see uh, all the material okay. that we get in. So a lot of the stuff that you get, you might get used material or you might get brand new material that's right. just overrun this is, from this the is publishing their, this house. Is, they, they consider it used because it's outdated, you know, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, it's brand new. It's never been read. Never been yeah, around. yeah, okay. So this this is an example, but you have lots of examples. I guess you ask people to send in reading material that they no longer need, don't yeah. you? Yeah, we get uh, about eight tons of mail a week from all over the country. Uh, people send us their uh, used Bibles or Sunday school materials, mm -hmm. daily devotionals, all those kind of things. Oh, that's terrific. So we'll show that up to you in a minute. That's terrific. And then, of course, there's the there, there's this issue of how you identify where does it need to go and how does it get there? Because once this leaves you, uh, you, you need to track it somehow, I assume. 
Yeah, well, the numbers on the side here is the tracking. Mm -hmm. uh, each, each container company has uh, numbered boxes, mm -hmm. and so uh, they know where every, it, it's hard to understand that this Mediterranean shipping company that has literally hundreds of thousands of these boxes knows where all of them are at. <laughs> you know, because uh, they scan them in, scan them out, you know, different yep. places. And, and so they, they, I can track this as it goes. Uh, once, it's, once it's recorded in, in East St. Louis at the rail yard, uh -huh. you know, you'll, you'll be able to go on the tracking and find out that it's there. When it gets to New York and it gets offloaded, it'll say where it's at. And then if it goes to Dubai, if it goes to the wrong place, it'll show you that too. You know. And yeah. Okay. So so this goes. Okay. This goes by truck from Butler right. to East St. Louis. Right. It gets loaded onto a rail car. Right. And it gets ra by rail to New York City. This one's going to go to New York City, but it oh, could oh. go in different places. I mean, if it was going to the Philippines, it might go out of Long Beach, California, okay. or San Francisco, or something. Yeah. Or if it's going to uh, the Caribbean, it might go out of Savannah, Georgia, or something. But and, and then, and then it, from New York City, it'll go to, to the port where it'll be loaded onto a cargo ship. Right. And then, like you say, maybe to Dubai to get sorted, resorted again to yeah. on its way they, to. They uh, load it on containers. You know, they have what they call feeder ships, and so they 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 send that full container to like Dubai, mm -hmm. and then they have a feeder ship that runs East Africa, mm -hmm. one that runs West Africa, one that runs. India or whatever, so they yeah. put them on these feeder ships that run back and forth, and that's wow. all they do is run back and forth. Remarkable. So now the, these fellows that just loaded, they're just about finished loading. Are they off for the rest of the day? Do they go and do what they do <laughs> on their farm or yeah, on this their guy's job? A farmer, or this guy's retired, so they're just so going to. cut them He's going to goof off go. the rest of the day. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get another one, Thanks, Jason Ellis. Okay, Steve, we're in the sort of, I guess we're in the incoming, right? This is this the is, incoming warehouse, okay. yeah. And, and part of this, you're going to explain this to us, part of this is stuff that has been mailed to you and part of it's brought in. In fact, we're looking at some ladies from Columbia, Illinois now who are bringing in some reading material. Right, they've come to volunteer today uh -huh. uh, for several hours. And uh, they're bringing us some literature too. So they're unloaded in the box there, and eventually we'll get over to the sorting room and sort it out. And okay, and that's a big th that's part of what you do here is not only not only solicit these materials and ask for them, but you also have to sort them out. It's a huge thing because you can't just send this stuff out. You got to know what it is. You yeah. got to know whether it's. I've been doing it a long time too. So you, and you yeah. know what to look and, for. And my staff is trained well. Okay, so so this is what is this a big bunch over here? Okay. This is incoming mail over on this side. Um, the postmaster, I don't know whether the postman was here yet or not today, but, but that's usually about a day's mail. Okay. Uh, we get eight tons of mail a week. It's coming from every state in the Union, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, Canada. It's no coming kidding. from everywhere. This one's from North Carolina. It sure is. Hickory, North Carolina. Yeah, this one's yeah. from Missouri. That one's from South Carolina. So <laughs> from every state in the Union, people send us material. And so then it's up to us to sort it. So yeah. it'll come to our sorting area. And then, like I said, this is our carry-in. Yeah, this has been brought in, yeah, and, and so all this others has too. Yeah, right? and we also have we have collection points in Indiana, Ohio, North Carolina, uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, people, churches, missions, associations collect literature in their area, and then they bring it to us in vans mm -hmm. or trucks or. Whatever. Yeah. So that stays there until we're ready to sort it. Because they know that you know where the need is, and from this distribution point, you can get this reading material out to people wherever well, the, they are in the, the world. The need is the need is great. Um, it's it's hard for us in America to think through or grab a hold of the fact that there are people all over the world. There's pastors today without Bibles. That's mm -hmm. really hard to, uh, for us in America to grab a hold yeah, of. Yeah. Um, there's Bible colleges with no books. I, I, I've been to a number of Bible colleges, and maybe they have 10 books for their library. And they got 150 students studying for the mm -hmm. ministry. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard for us in America to grab that thing. But you see, the, the average income of, of a third world person, uh, where we send this literature into, the average income per person is about $300 per year. Mm -hmm. So it's less than a dollar in a day. And these people not only have have they no religious material to read, they have nothing to read. They, they really have nothing Th to this read. This might be their sole, the, the sole uh, source of, of any intellectual going on at all. Right. Wow. So it's a big deal. Yes, it is. It is a big deal. Okay. So. What are these big boxes over here? Is this more of the incoming? This is all the incoming. Uh -huh. Well, this is, we just got off the truck. This is from the Southern Baptist. This is some of their leftover materials. And so um, we didn't have room over on the other side, so we're just mm -hmm. sticking it here until we get room. But all this is going to be bandable, and we'll go over to the banding machines mm -hmm. here in a minute. Okay. 
And of course, Steve, everything has to be sorted. Right. So we'll bring our boxes over here and then it'll come down the line. We've got four positions here to sort. And so there's three of us on staff and then we have volunteers that are trained as well. Mm -hmm. And so it'll all come here and we'll sort it. We sort good and bad. We take out all the good housekeeping magazines, the love letters, all electric <laughs> bills, all that kind of stuff. Stuff that's not appropriate. Yeah, right? things yeah. Are, and then it gets scrapped out and, and we'll actually sell that to um, you know, people that a recycle. Recycle, right. Yeah. Like this this huge box right here, this is all recycle material. Right. And so you just load that onto a truck, take it to Decatur, and they pay you for the paper. Right. Super. Well that's so that's that a good way to bring bit. in a little money, you bet. Right. And so, and this is a volunteer that's working, uh, she's sorting. Yeah, she's okay. we trained her to sort some books and, and Sunday school materials. God love her so she's volunteers. Working. No kidding. No kidding. So when we gets here everything's sorted and it's not only sorted good and bad, but it's sorted in different categories. And so this is a book bin. So we just put the books in there, and then we got volunteers. They'll come and pack up. That's a Bible bin over there. We okay, got a couple what, volunteers. That's what Jackie's working. Jackie and uh, Darlene bin. is working okay. on uh, packing Bibles right now. Mm -hmm. And then it'll come to the line here, and it will all get color coded. Okay. So and, and these are in categories, aren't they? The, these yeah, shelvings this, are in categories. This is all Sunday school literature out here. Uh -huh. We keep the last five years of the most common Sunday school curriculum that we get. So when we get a box in and it's only got one or two of a particular class or whatever, we'll match it out here until we get enough to make a class. I see. Okay. So you don't just send one book. That's yeah. not going to do a class any good. Yeah. It's better for a class. And, and when you say color code, I mean... We've got these little bingo these, markers. Okay. So, and we'll okay. put a little dot on top of the box. And that allows our distributor, when they get that big container mm -hmm. full of literature, mm -hmm. uh, if they're looking for 50 cases of Bibles, they don't have to open 900 boxes in order to find them. All they have to do is look for black spots, which these girls are okay, going to put so, on. Okay, so they would take a black one of these, right, put it on put the it box, in. and they know that's Bibles. Right. Okay, what's purple? Purple is magazines and devotionals. Uh, orange would be uh, videos oh, and I DVDs. See. And there's the color code. Red right is there. reference material, blue is books. Neat. Neat. And so then it gets, and then down the line it goes. Uh huh. Okay. And then you've got now you've got a whole part of the warehouse over here that's devoted to what's this for? This section of the warehouse, this half of the warehouse, is dedicated to uh, publishing houses, and so all this material is coming in from um, eight major publishing houses that we get material from. These half boxes here are from the Southern Baptist Publishing House, and so this is their damaged product mm -hmm. that you know got a crinkle cover or it, you know was on the top of the skid and maybe got sun faded or you know something. Yeah, so they throw yeah. it in here. And then we sort it out and match it up so it matches, and then uh, eventually bring it to one of the banding machines and strap it, and then it goes overseas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's walk down that way a little bit. All right. Here's a huge box, and this all these all look like new books, for instance. Yes, th these are coming in, but here's here's ones that are done. Let's look at these. Okay, I'm right behind you. These are things that have been done. These these came in from David C. Cook. Mm -hmm. And, and so, is that a publishing house? That's a publishing house up in Elgin, Illinois. And we get a couple of truckloads every quarter from them. Mm -hmm. And so we go and pick it up with our truck. And it comes in, it comes in, in big boxes like this, usually loose. Mm -hmm. And so we have volunteers that separate it out on these skids like this. That's what this is all. They've separated it all out. Mm -hmm. And then when we got volunteers, we'll match it up. So many teachers, so many students, so many packets. Put it together, strap it up, make bundles like this. Yeah. And then it's ready to be shipped. Okay. So we bundle, this is called uh, this is called what strapping. Strapping. Yeah. Okay. All right. And you got you got volunteers doing that so today, don't you? There's so many. All of these are students, and then these four on top are, are teachers. So. Yeah. Perfect. Well, Jackie, that's pretty nifty. That saves a lot of time and trouble, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Do you know exactly how many to put in each in each uh, stack? Yes, yes, I do. Uh -huh. Just kind of, just kind of eyeball it, mm -hmm. and then just get her strapped here. This makes it so much easier to to get it in that box. <laughs> I'll bet. Oh yeah. Can you imagine all those loose magazines oh, and no. pamphlets and no. et cetera? Turned? This is this is a handy machine, that's for sure. Now they gave you they gave you an easy job, didn't they? Because this is your first day. <laughs> yes, yes, they did. <laughs> so they gave you an easy job. Yes, they did. You you live in Butler though, yes. and you've known Steve Schmidt for a long time. Yes. How, yes, how do you go life. back with him? Oh my, he was my um, pastor um, at our old church, uh, the Redemption Center uh, in Hillsboro, mm -hmm. just, just right down the road. Right. And so I've known him my whole life and uh, great, 
great person and uh, actually Love Packages started in the basement of our church. And uh, I'm 34 years old, so it's been going on for a very long yes, time. Yes, it has. Mm -hmm. yes. He said he's been doing this for 38 years, so that predates you. It sure yeah, does. Yeah. <laughs> so why did you decide to come here to help? Well, I actually had a day off, and I had time to volunteer. And and like I told um, told you before, um, there's no reason for a mission field this great being in your own town, no reason why I can't get here to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have small children and things, and I actually work two jobs. But I thought, you know, I'm, I need to do it yeah. and because well, it's so, our heart. So your time is precious. Yes, You don't yes, have a lot of is. spare time. But this is for Jesus, yeah. and this is what we need to do. Yeah. We need to do it because uh, we're so blessed in the United States, so blessed, and we have all this. And it's just unbelievable to me that... Uh, we have this, and there's so many people out there and, that don't have access to this. And if it wasn't for Steve and his heart for Jesus and to our to mission mm -hmm. for Jesus is to go yeah. and spread the gospel. And if this is the way I can do it, mm -hmm. if I can't go out physically to another country, even though our mission field is here in your own home too, mm -hmm. but if I can't go there, at least I know this can get there. That's right. So Well, thanks for talking with us. Thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> it. Okay, Steve, this looks like a beehive of activity right here. Now, we're in the lower part of the warehouse. Right. This is, I guess this is called outgoing. This huh? is the outgoing warehouse. Okay. Yes. What are they doing? Well, we had the opportunity to buy Bibles uh, from a publishing house. Um, these were uh, a special edition, a Christmas edition. Uh, they normally sell for 50 cents or 75 cents a dollar a piece, you know. Mm -hmm. But we were able to buy them for 29 cents a piece. Mm -hmm. And so we put it on our newsletter and people responded. So we bought 256,000 of them so far. Oh my goodness. So what they're doing is they're taking out the, uh, there's a little invitation in a, in a, a bag to hang it on people's doorknobs. Uh -huh. So they're taking that out because it's not usable for us. And then stuffing the boxes so I that they're see. full. Any idea where those will go? Well, I got this whole stack over here and stack over here. We, we put 7,000 on that load this morning. Okay, so that was going so, in a row. So we're going to piecemeal it out. I see. Send okay. a few in, wow. in every which one. That's terrific. Um, okay, let's start Let's start with this side over here. Now, you, we, we saw the process up there with the sorting and the boxing and the banding. Right. That all comes down here. Everything comes down here. Okay. And so then you, walk us through what, what happens next. Well, all this stuff over on this side is, is all done and, and completed and ready to be shipped. And in this warehouse, we work on three different loads at the same time. And so uh, it's divided off, in our, in a, at least in our mind, where it's divided off. Mm -hmm. And so we got this first load going to go to Liberia, and the middle section here is going to go to Tanzania. Okay, that's and what then, we're looking at right now, yeah, Tanzania. Right, right uh -huh. in front. And then back in the corner, we, we keep accumulating material in Spanish until we get enough to send a load into Honduras or Guatemala. Uh huh. Okay. And, and these so are we're working on three different loads. These are regular places that you send things, and you know the need is there. Yes. And well, the need is everywhere. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, what we've done is we've set up distribution points, various different places in the world, mm -hmm. where we can send in large amounts of literature, and they distribute it out in their country. Um, in some countries, we work with the um, maybe the Evangelical Fellowship of of that country. You know, mm -hmm. so there's maybe 70 different organizations under that umbrella. Uh, some places we work with Campus Crusade, other places we work with Every Home for Christ. But we work with people that's on the ground. We, we, there's only three of us on staff, so we, we don't have the wherewithal in all these different nations in order to, right. to do that on the ground. So we work with people that's already well established right. with good recommendations, you know. Yeah, you're part of a network. Right. You're part of it. It's wonderful. Now, I did notice this. This is interesting. I see books and boxes and boxes and boxes of books, and then I got to this, and I thought, Okay, now how does this fit in? <laughs> what are these things? And these are old treadle sewing machines, uh -huh. okay? And a lot of people have them sitting around, but these have been reworked by um, uh, Midwest Mission up here, the United Methodist in, in Chatham. Chatham. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. And so these all been reworked, and uh, we're going to send these into Tanzania next week. So it's it's. You know, where they don't have any electricity, this is really a, a godsend. Particularly for people that don't, I mean, the average income is $300, but that means that there's a whole lot of people that are not making $300 mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. And so there's widows and things, they don't have any way to make a living. So this is a lifeline for them. Do you, do you ever hear uh, of, uh, of individual stories of places like, yeah. like this where, where, where people have we, used these? We shipped a load into Cameroon, mm -hmm. that's on the, um, 
west coast From of west, Africa. Yeah. And so uh, the guy wrote me back and he sent me a letter and, and he told me the story as well. Um, there was a woman there, her husband had died, she had three small children and they were actually starving to death. And so when he got one of these sewing machines from us, he uh, said, go and find that woman and bring her to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so when she got there, he gave her the sewing machine. He said, this is a gift for you. And she just crumpled on the ground and just began to cry, holding onto the sewing machine. This saved my life, this saved my life, you know? And so it doesn't seem like a big deal for us, but for someone uh, around the world, I mean, these things could be... Who has no way to make a living. They have no way to make... And so she could then make some clothes, children's clothes and women's clothes, and then sell those things. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and so make a little bit, enough to eat, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Well, Steve, an operation this size with only three staff members, yourself and two others, right. you rely on volunteers. Yeah, we can't get it done without volunteers. You can't push 20 tons of literature out the door every week without a lot of volunteers. Yeah, yeah. Last year we had 1,800 and some volunteers, and this year we're way ahead of that pace. Is that I right? I think we're already at um, 15, 1,600 now yeah. already. It, it behooves you to make a dormitory space available for those folks who want to come here and maybe stay for a week yeah. uh, to help out. I mean, they sleep here, they work here, they bathe here, they. You know, they, they have this as, they could be consider this their vacation, I guess, in some ways. We had a lot of people come on vacation with mm -hmm. us, you know, take two or three days, or, or we've had youth groups come, men's groups, women's groups, stay with us a week, three days, four days, whatever, overnight, and just mm -hmm. work on Saturday, or a variety, a variety of different things. But um, um, like I said, you know, we got a dormitory here that sleeps 32 upstairs mm -hmm. and 10 downstairs, so. We never can use that yeah, many volunteers, yeah. but that's it, it gives yeah. them availability to do that. No, it's terrific. We it have really eight is. showers here so they can clean up and, and uh, kitchen facilities. Mm -hmm. so, and we like people that come and bring a team and then they, they bring a good cook with them and, <laughs> and feed us. <laughs> There's one, one thing we like more than volunteers is volunteers that bring good food. <laughs> and you've had people here from, I guess, all over the country. All huh? over the country, yeah. 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 Um, I know there's a, at, at the Midwest, uh, uh, center near Chatham. They have also have cabins and right. dormitory. They're area. a little fancier so, than we are. Well, but, th but it's functional. It's but perfectly it is functional. functional. Yeah, it works very much. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this summer, did you have, was this well used? Oh, the, yeah, we had people summer? here almost every day. Yeah. And they're willing to get their hands dirty, I see. Right. <laughs> Man, it's hard work, you yeah, know? It is. And uh, when they come home, this is their home for the week, you know? Um, they get a nice shower and get cleaned up and they sleep well that night. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're very fortunate because this was part of the old elementary school in Butler, right? We actually built the second floor on this, or the second story on this. It was a flat roof building. Mm -hmm. And so we talked with some engineers and they said, you could build on top of it. So we built all this that you see. Mm -hmm. In the last building we were in, the warehouse area, where the outgoing materials were, we noticed that there was still a basketball hoop in there. So that was the gymnasium, that was the gymnasium, gymnasium right. for the Butler uh, uh, elementary school. We, we were out of room where we were at and so we bought this property for the gymnasium to use it for that purpose. Mm -hmm. And then the Butler Elementary School closed down because they consolidated with, with Hillsboro. And then you knew it was available and it was a perfect match for you, wasn't it? Yeah, it did. It worked out well. Yeah. And you've been doing this for 38 years. 38 years yeah. I've been doing it. Well, you want to show us a little bit about the beginning years? Sure. We'll talk about that. Okay, let's go. Okay, Steve, we're in, the, we're in the kitchen that your volunteers have access right, to when they right. come to stay here. I asked you about how you got started. Right. And you said, what well, was 38 years ago? Yeah. And, and I thought, well, you know, I wonder how young you must have been 38 years ago. And if we look at this picture, <laughs> you're in the orange shirt there at the right. top with your two young sons and a friend of yours. You're on your front porch of your home, I guess. That's my home. And, and you were kind of torn at that time as to well, how, why you would save religious literature. Well, I had a little stack of, this is spring of 1975, I had a little stack of decision magazines from Billy Graham mm -hmm. and a few devotionals and an old Bible or two sitting in the corner of my dining room. And every time I walked through there, God pointed his finger at me and said, Steve, you're wasting that. <laughs> I don't know whether you like I am or not, but I argue with the Lord sometimes. And so I argued with the Lord for about three months. And finally I got to the place saying, okay, God, I'm going to waste it. But I mean, what do I do with it? I mean, who wants it? I mean, it's mm -hmm. four years old. Who wants it, you know? And so I sent a letter to five guys in four different nations, and I asked them, can you use English literature? And if so, how much and how soon? And it seemed like the letters were only gone a couple days. The letters were back and said, yes, we can use as much as you can get here, mm -hmm. as soon as you can get it here. So I didn't, ever, I didn't know everybody had a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. You know, I was unaware. Yeah. And, so, uh, but as, and so my wife and I just started in the basement of my home, and uh, 
But as I would go to the Calvary Baptist chicken dinner or the Free Methodist pancake supper, and people that I knew would talk to me, they'd say, what have you been doing? I'd say, I've been collecting old Bibles and Sunday school material, and I'd go, oh, we've got a whole closet full of that stuff in our church. Can we bring ours over to you? And so they started bringing it, and it just piled up it on my... It starts piling up on your porch. Right. Here's a picture of your wife. Look, she's already boxed and banded all this. Right, we've done that. And, and putting it in the basement, I guess, right? Yeah, Is the first, we're the, yeah, we're in the basement. <laughs> That's where we started, in the basement of the, of the, of the house. Mm -hmm. And then the first year we sent 60 little boxes. Uh, but then as people word of mouth heard about us, the next year we did three and a half tons. And then wow. seven tons, and then 11 tons. We outgrew the basement, went to the double car garage. Here's the double car garage right, right here. Okay. Outgrew it, and uh, uh, you know, so it's grown and grown and grown every year. It's grown and grown and grown. And, and then in 90, 1995, uh, this is what the building here looked like. This mm -hmm. is the kitchen and the bathrooms and stuff. It was, this was a flat roof building. It was in pretty bad shape, but we bought that for the gymnasium, uh -huh. so we could use it for the warehouse. Yeah, and. Uh, we repaired it and made it functional, and then we built the second story on top of it. And that was the dormitory That's that we were That's the dormitory we uh -huh. were just in. And then we, uh, five years ago, six years ago now, yeah, we built the new building over there for right. our secondary warehouse because we were outgrown all, outgrew all that. And that was the area where we saw the incoming, the mail, right. and the incoming. That's the incoming warehouse. Right, now. and that's where the sorting went on. Right, that's, that's a, a new whole building. new building. Yeah, six oh, years ago. Fantastic, fantastic. And keep, people keep asking me, are you going to outgrow that one? I hope not. <laughs> I mean, I, hey, you know, I mean, if it happens, I, if it happens, happens right, happens, you'll find I, a way to do it. I'm just pushing it out as fast as it comes in. That's what right. I'd like. That's right. But I mean, uh, it's, it's just remarkable. And you have made these contacts all over the world. Right. Uh, from people, from other pastors who are screaming for literature, aren't right. they? Right. They can never get enough. Uh, like I said earlier, you know, it's hard for us in America to grab a hold of the idea that there's, there's whole nations without any Sunday school literature. Uh, there's, there's pastors with no Bibles. There's mm -hmm. Bible schools with no books. And so anything that we can put in their hands is so beneficial and helpful. Yeah, yeah. Steve, thank you so much for showing us around. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. <laughs> As we speak, more than 16 shipping containers are on the oceans somewhere around the world, taking more than 300 tons of reading material to Christians in poor countries. With another Illinois story in Butler, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.